right. I think this thing's recording. Excellent. All right. So um, we've been getting a lot. Hey, it's uh, Jim Lambright, uh, the uh, smaller part of the Lambright team, Stacy being the, uh, the big part of the Lambright team. But we've been getting all kinds of questions over what's going on with this tax bill and what is going to happen with my residential real estate. Now, there's all kinds of other parts of the tax bill that everybody's complaining over, fighting over, arguing over. This is not a political uh, conversation. In fact, you start a political conversation with me on it, I will cut you, I'll cut you out. Don't tempt me. So anyways, but this is just, what's gonna happen with real estate, man? There's a lot of misinformation out there. People freaking out that uh, they're, they're getting screwed by the government. And let me tell you, a few of you are, a very small percentage of you are getting shafted, but most of you that are listening to this or not, I mean, it's like a couple percentage of you. It's basically the rich people. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean here. Uh, the wealthy people got the shaft in this deal, but the rest of us made out just fine. Uh, so I'm gonna clear up the information on that and I wanna get started. So what we're gonna talk about today is the new tax code and its impact on residential real estate. Now, this is not talking about commercial real estate. This isn't talking about your flipping. This isn't talking about any of that. This is talking about you and your home that you own. Let me see how I can click to the next box. There we go. All right, that did not do it. Hang on here. This is, you gotta be smarter than the little clicker thing to move it ahead. How do we move ahead? There we go. All right, first of all, the following is not meant to be, is not meant to be a resource for tax advice, but instead a resource for basic information concerning only certain aspects of the new tax code and how they may impact the real estate market. So uh, your clients and customers, you guys are clients and customers, you should get tax advice from your accountant or your financial advisor who explain how the entire tax code will affect your tax return, okay? This information uh, comes immediately after the new tax code became law. Some of the information will be revised as the analysis of the new law evolves. So, I am not a tax accountant. I am not a tax advisor. I am not a tax attorney, and I do not play one on TV. This is just information for you so you don't have to freak out. All right, there are three major proposed changes. Number one, changing the requirements for the exclusion of gain on the sale of principal residence. Okay, so we're gonna talk about that. Where's capital gains paid, okay? Number two, we're gonna talk about the reduction on the limit of the mortgage interest deduction. There's a lot of misinformation about that, like, oh my gosh, I lost my interest deduction on my mortgage. We're gonna talk about the exact numbers, okay? That way you're not uh, getting stuff from the mainstream media and things like that. And then we're also gonna talk about number three, the elimination of the state and local tax deduction, better known as SALT, okay, S-A-L-T, which includes property taxes. We are gonna talk about that. All right, so number one, exclusion of gain of a principal residence. What's that mean? So um, the, the gain of sale on a primary residence, let's talk about that. See, the original proposal was this. Owners would need to live in their house for at least five out of the last eight years to claim this exemption, okay? Under the former tax framework, a typical owner who had lived in their house for at least two years of the last five years would pay nothing in capital gains if they sold the house, all right? So you had to live in the house two of the last five years and you didn't have to pay anything on capital gains. The new tax code is like this, no change. They kept it the same. The at least two years out of the last five years requirement is unchanged. People were freaking out over this, especially people who uh, buy houses, live in them for two years, and then flip them and buy another one, which is a very smart investing strategy. If you ever want to talk to us about it, about how to get around capital gains, you can talk to us and we'll get with your accountant and get you the exact tax advice. Again, we're not tax people, right? So what's the impact on the real estate market? None. People were claiming that this was gonna crash the real estate market, it's done, it's over. No, hellfire brimstone is not happening. Uh, there's no impact on the market here because we kept it the same, we, the government, the US, kept it the same. Okay, the next thing we wanna talk about, this is where all the, the fretting and hair pulling is coming from, is the mortgage interest tax deduction. The mortgage interest tax deduction, better known as MID, the original proposal was this. This is where people are getting confused. They wanted to reduce the limit on the mortgage interest tax deduction from a million to 500,000. Now that was gonna affect a lot of people. Maybe some of you listening are like, well, that doesn't include me. You're right, it doesn't include you. But they changed the original proposal. They actually compromised the House and the Senate 
and they came up with a $750,000 number. They're going to reduce the limit on deductible mortgage interest debt to $750,000 for new loans taken after, out after 12, 14, 17. So what's that mean? Currently, if you already have a house, you're grandfathered up to a million dollars. You can still deduct your mortgage interest tax deduction. Now, what I tell you? Uh, I told you, most people probably that are listening to this, your house is less than $750,000. If it is, stop worrying. There's no effect to you. But for my friends who are better off and uh, uh, it is getting lowered from a million to 750, look, it's going to affect you guys. Uh, you're going to end up paying more. And I uh, apologize for that. But uh, well, why am I apologizing? I didn't make the rules. We elected these people. So anyways, most of you listening, it's not going to affect you. So stop worrying about it. And again, it's after 12, 14, 17. So uh, December 14th. Okay. So the mortgage interest deduction, what are the experts saying the impact's going to have on the market? Well, if you're assuming a 20% down payment, and most of our upper end people that are buying these million dollar homes and stuff like that are putting down at minimum 20%, a lot of them a lot more, right? Assuming a 20% down payment, this reduction in the mid mortgage interest deduction will only impact buyers that are purchasing a home between the prices of 938,000 and 1.25 million. So what does that mean to the market? Well, the experts kind of disagree, but uh, calculated risks, Bill McBride says, I think the impact of reducing the mid from a maximum of 1 million in mortgage debt to 750,000 mortgage debt will have very low impact on the housing market. But on the other hand, capital economics claims the impact on expensive homes could be detrimental with a limit on the mid raising taxes for those that itemize. Why do they say that? Well, because a lot of wealthy people itemize their taxes, okay? So, um, we're again, the upper level people, looks like uh, you guys might be taking it a little bit, but here at Central Ohio, look, there's not a lot of million dollar homes uh, that, are, that are making sale. I mean, we have million dollar homes and higher, but the majority of homes being sold in uh, Central Ohio, I mean, you're talking about a 175 to $200,000 average price um you know we're not talking we're not california new york city you know san francisco places like that we're paying a thousand bucks a square foot it just doesn't happen here we're paying between 100 and 200 bucks a square foot on most most houses so um for most people that, that it's just not going to affect us here in the midwest um how about salt state and local taxes including property taxes okay so now this one's going to get a few of you all right so here we go so SALT, the original proposal was this, the elimination, the elimination of the state and local tax deduction. Man, people freaked out over this. Um, include property taxes, right? That was a big deal. So here's what happened. The new tax code says this. They compromised on allowing an itemized deduction of up to $10,000 for the total of state and local property taxes and income or sales taxes, okay? So up to $10,000. Some of you are gonna get caught in that. Uh, we live here in New Albany. Uh, Stacy and I, we're going to get hit. Uh, we're going to get hit with that, uh, but we can do up to ten thousand. Before it was going to be the whole thing, but we can do up to ten thousand dollars on our taxes, and the rest uh, we're not going to be able to deduct on that. So we'll have an effect on on people that uh, you know. If you have half a million dollar house or up, uh, there's a good chance five hundred thousand up. It's going to be affecting you. Okay, so um, that's how that's going to be on that state and local taxes. Uh, but if you're paying less than 10000 a year, uh, so less than $800 a month, no effect on you. You're good to go. Okay, so what impacts this going to have on the market? Well, most experts are agreeing that higher taxed regions will be impacted as those homeowners now have a cap on these deductions. So, uh, for example, SALT will have an impact on housing in some areas. Some people might choose to live in one state over another based on taxation. This could impact demand in certain states. Um, Mark Zandi of Moody Analytics said that the impact on house prices is much greater for higher priced homes, especially in parts of the country where incomes are higher, and there are thus a disproportionate number of itemizers and where homeowners have big mortgages and property tax bills. Look, the big cities are gonna get nailed. Hollywood and the elites like that are gonna get popped. Um, you know, here in Central Ohio, you're gonna see some impact on it. Um, but we live in the greatest country in the world. I've been traveling the world and I can tell you, just simple things like emergency services and roads and things like that. Even though we pay a lot in taxes, we do have a better opportunity here and our things are, we just have a nicer country, we do. So what will be the overall impact on the housing market? Well, for most of the country, the new tax code will not have a negative impact, not have a negative impact on the market. Uh, Capital economics reports this. 
given most households will see an overall tax cut and potential buyers are, are likely to put that savings towards their home, we doubt it will have a significant detrimental impact on the housing market. There is no doubt that some higher priced, higher tax regions will be affected more than others. However, most experts agree that other portions of the tax code will favor the high end buyer and seller, and this might mitigate the loss, right? So they're losing some over here in the residential, but maybe gaining some over here um, in death tax and corporate tax and things like that that maybe help mitigate some of that, okay? Uh, Bill McBride, again, from Calculated Risk says that, uh, uh, he says, I expect the high end of the market to be fine. The high end is already doing well, even with the mortgage interest deduction capped at $1 million. Uh, if you buy a million dollar house, you're doing all right, you know, um, so that's how that is. But, what will be the over impact on the luxury market? Now this, what's gonna happen here? Bill McBride says for these buyers, the bigger impact will be the salt, right? And property tax limitations, but there will be offsets for these buyers due to lower rates. And these buyers will likely benefit from the corporate tax cuts. Many of these buyers will also benefit from changes to the alternative minimum tax. If you don't know what the AMT is, the alternative minimum tax, if you make about a thousand bucks a day, uh, the AMT is something that affects you. If you're not making that much money, don't worry about it. It's not, uh, it's not something for you. It's the upper end people. There's a way for the government to tax extra the rich. So um, not that $365,000 a year is rich, but the upper end, okay? It is the upper to mid range in certain markets that will probably sell, okay? So here's, here's what we're gonna see. This might be in the $750,000 to $1.5 million range. You might see some slowing in here. These potential buyers, they're probably not gonna benefit from the AMT or corporate changes, but they will likely be hit by the salt and property tax limits. So those people in that range, because they're not ultra uber high income earners, right? But yet they're not down here where they're benefiting from the tax. So there's this gap in there. You people are gonna get popped. And uh, you gotta work your way up and get up there and benefit from the alternative minimum tax or open a corporation. We can show you how to do that, okay? But there could be a ripple effect if the upper to mid range slows, that could impact some of the purchases of the higher range. So again, 750,000 to 1.5 million, that bracket right there, we could see some slowing uh, on this because the tax uh, cuts are not gonna benefit them. It's actually gonna penalize them a little bit, okay? Um, so what's this mean to all buyers and sellers? Well, to know for sure, again, you need to sit with your accountant or financial planner and explore how all the aspects of the new code will impact your family. With that being said, most families consider home ownership an essential part of the American dream and don't purchase a home based solely on the tax advantages. The main reasons you buy a home are personal, right? You just got married, you're looking for a good place to raise your children, you want to be near family and friends, you want a bigger house, and you want to enjoy your retirement. This will never change. So hopefully this cleared up a little bit as to what is going on. Um, again, it's mostly the upper end people that are going to get nailed on this. And uh, for those of you that are, uh, are out there, enjoy your uh, enjoy your tax refund that's going to come back to you. They said seventy-two thousand uh, dollar people making seventy-two thousand dollars of family should be getting around two grand back. Don't blow it. Go out and uh, buy a house with it, right? Because uh, buying a house is way more affordable right now than renting. But that is another video. So I'm going to stop this video. Stop recording. Thanks for coming out. And by the way, uh, Stacy and I are now with EXP Realty, the Lambright team at EXP Realty. If you know any realtors that are looking for a change looking for a better split, looking for company stock, looking for a revenue share program. Um, if they're looking for agent ownership, have them come see us. Thanks, everybody. We will see you soon. The spring market is here. All right, I'm going to turn this off. Sure, we will. There it is.